functions that have issues, square root functions, rational functions, trig functions, you should always check those before you jump into doing IBT. Make sure that your interval falls within your domain. If it does not, you have nothing to do. You're done. You can't apply IVT, so you can just go on your merry way. All right, so let's do this. F of negative 4.5. So we plug that in. This one does require a calculator, so I'll help you guys out. Because no, I'm not, I mean, you could square 4.5 by hand. It's really not that bad. But <clears throat> now, here's a note. Don't forget, if it's a negative number, you got to put it in parentheses before you square it. Or just don't put the negative in there. Okay, you know that negative 4.5 squared is the same as positive 4.5 squared, so why even bother? Um, but there's the answer. Let's take the square root of that. That's the part you definitely could not do by hand. So we've got approximately 2.179. I don't know that I have mentioned this before to you guys, but on the AP exam, uh, you round, well, you don't actually round. You write three numbers after the decimal and you stop. It's called truncating. You just write the first three numbers after the decimal. You don't worry about what the next number is, whether you're supposed to round up or round down. Just write the first three numbers and stop. Okay, that is your place of accuracy on the AP exam. And that is how I will grade things. Okay, so if there is rounding, if, if it is not a whole number answer, then you best be putting the correct answer. Or three numbers after the decimal place. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Uh, the square root of... 25 minus 3 squared is 4. 25 minus 9 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. And we're only considering the, the original function was the positive square root, so we're only considering positive 4. Yes, I realize that I try and emphasize the positive and negative, but here it's a function. We're only considering the positive. All right, so um, is our k between these two numbers? Yes, it is. So... Um, let's find out where. 3 is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. How do we get rid of a square root? Square it. So we get 9 is equal to 25 minus x squared. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. I don't like negative x squared, so I'm going to add the x squared and subtract the 9 x squared is equal to 16, take the square root, we get 4. Um, we took a square root, so we've got to consider the positive and the negative. Why did I have to go back in there and put that in there? Because look at our interval, positive 4 is not in our interval. Okay, so C for this problem is negative 4. C for this problem is negative 4. Okay, questions? Let's do one more example. We've got a rational function, f of x is equal to 1 over x, uh, excuse me, no, I was about to say x squared, 1 over x minus 2. Rational function, got to check the domain. This one would exclude what value? Positive 2, okay, all real numbers except x equals 2. Uh, is that an issue, though, with this interval? No, the interval's from 3 to 5. The discontinuity is outside of that interval, so our function is continuous on this interval from 3 to 5, so we are good to proceed. f of 3 is equal to 1 over 3 minus 2, which is just 1. f of 5 is equal to 1 over 5 minus 2, which is 1 third. Ooh, this is fun. Fractions. Is 5 sixths between 1 and 1 third? Mm. 
It is. Here's how to check. Turn both those numbers into something over 6. 1 is 6 over 6. 1 third, multiply top and bottom by 2, it's equal to 2 sixths. 5 sixths is between 2 sixths and 6 sixths. Trust me, you will be using fractions a lot in this class, so please, please, please become comfortable with them. I don't care if you don't want to, you're going to have to. Suck it up, buttercup. All right, so intermediate value theorem applies. Let's find out where. Set our function equal to 5 sixths. You get to do one of your favorite things right here, which is How do we solve for x? Fraction equal to a fraction, what do you do? Oh, it's always y'all's answer when it's not really the answer. Cross multiply. You actually get to cross multiply here. Fraction equal to a fraction, you get to cross multiply. Y'all love to say it when it's not cross multiply, but then you never say it when it is cross multiply. Anyways, go figure. All right, so 5 times x minus 2 is equal to 6 times 1. So 5x minus 10 is equal to 6. 5x is equal to 16. x is equal to 16 over 5, um, which is in our interval. How do I know that? 5 goes into 16 three times with one left over. So we've got 3 and 1 fifth, 3.2, whatever it may be. It's greater than 3, so we are good. Our C value is 16 over 5. Leave it in fractional form. I only did the 3 and 1 fifth to make sure that it was in my interval. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, whatever that was Yes. I'm comparing it to K because I want to know does my function equal K on this interval? Okay. And which one are the Mm hmm. Okay. That's when I am setting my function equal to that k value. Yes. That really, that last comparison is not ne really necessary. That's just me checking my work to make sure I didn't make a careless mistake. Because this number, this final number, well, this final number ahead is C. That should be in your interval. I'm just doing a quick check to make sure it is in my interval. If I plug 15 over, or excuse me, 16 over 5 into this function, my answer will be 5 over 6. It just take a little bit of work, but that would be my answer. Okay, so 